Next, let's take a look at some features of the dying component of the reaction. So we learned that electron withdrawing groups on the dienophile increase the rate. The opposite is true for the dying. On the dying, electron donating groups accelerate the reaction. So let's again look at a series of dienes. If you have a withdrawing group on that diene, like a nitro group, that's going to be a very slow diels auto reaction. A bit faster than that will just be an unsubstituted diene. Then we can increase the rate further by adding an electron donating group. Let's say we have a methoxy group, OCH3. Because of the lone pairs on that oxygen, that's a donating group. So this is going to make for a fast diels alder reaction. And it really doesn't matter where that donating group is. You could have it at that top position or if we have it right here that's going to have about the same effect on the rate regardless of where it's positioned. So now combining this with what we learned before with the dienophile, the best diels auto reaction is going to have a donating group on the diene and a withdrawing group on the dienophile. So here's an example. Here's a diene and I'm going to put an NH2 group on it. That's a donating group. And then on my dienophile, I'm going to put a couple of nitro groups. And those are electron withdrawing groups. So this is going to be a really fast diels auto reaction. Here's our product. We'll have on one side the amino group, on the other side the nitro groups. Since they're cis on the double bond, I'll draw them cis in the product and then just write plus enantiomer to say that the other enantiomer will also form. One thing you may have noticed in some of these examples that we've been doing is that I've often drawn the dyne in a very particular way. Like this, whereas for 1,3-butadiene, if I ask you to draw that, the way you would probably draw it is like this. And there's a reason for that. What I've been doing is drawing this dyne in its reactive conformation. And for the diels auto reaction, the dyne must be in what's known as the S-cis conformation to react. This term S-cis, what that means is single bond cis-like. And this will probably make more sense when I draw a picture for you. So if you were to draw 1,3-butadiene in this zigzag type conformation, it would look something like this. And I'm going to draw it uh, pointed vertically instead of horizontally. Now here's our diene and we have this single bond that connects the two double bonds of the diene. And at that single bond, the two double bonds are pointed in opposite directions. One's pointed to the left, one's pointed to the right. This is known as the S-trans conformation because trans means they're on opposite sides. But we have free rotation around single bonds, so what the molecule can do is freely rotate around this single bond 
and can go into the reactive S cis conformation. So here's that same single bond, but now the two double bonds attached to it are pointed in the same direction, so that is S cis. Now of these, if you were to um, draw out these conformations into a Newman projection, what you would find is that in the S cis conformation, these two double bonds are eclipsing whereas in the S-trans conformation, these double bonds are staggered. So certainly the S-trans conformation is more stable and preferred. And at any given time, about 98% of the molecules will be existing in the S-trans conformation, and only a small 2% in the S-cis conformation. But it is an equilibrium between the two. So the fact that there is an equilibrium at all will allow the reaction to take place. So here's how this works. We need this reactive conformation, and although only 2% of the molecules exist in that conformation, if we do some Diels-Alder reaction with that, let's just keep it really simple and react it with ethylene and get a product, that 2% will react away. And then the equilibrium will re-establish to give another 2% of this reactive conformation and solution, which will continue to react to give product. That process will continue until all of the starting material has reacted away and gets consumed. Some dienes are locked in the S-trans conformation making them unreactive in the diels auto reaction. What this means is if they're locked in that S-trans, they can't rotate to get into the S-cis conformation. The most common place where we see this is in rings, where you have a diene with one double bond inside the ring and one double bond outside of the ring. Here's the single bond that connects these two, but because that ring has everything tied up over here, there's no free rotation around this bond. For that reason, this diene is locked in S-trans and it's unreactive in the diels alder reaction. One other scenario where the diene is effectively locked is when we have really, really bulky groups. Here's an example of that. Let's say you have tert butyl groups attached. Here's our S trans conformation. And let's look at what happens if we rotate around this single bond. Let's rotate the bottom group around. Now we have these two tert butyl groups next to one another. These groups are great big. They run into one another, and this is too much steric strain. For that reason, this conformation doesn't form, and the diene is effectively locked in S-trans. We also have the complete flip side to this. Dienes can be locked in the reactive S-cis conformation. And if that's the case, it's going to be an especially reactive dienophile in the diels alder reaction. Again, you most commonly see this happening uh, with the involvement of rings. So here's an example 
of a ring with the double bonds on the outside of the ring. And again, because of the ring restricting free rotation around the single bond here, this diene is locked in the S-cis conformation. These double bonds are on the outside of the ring. This is considered, or these are considered exocyclic double bonds. We can also have the double bonds on the inside of the ring. Here's a couple of examples of that. These are endocyclic double bonds. And again, because of the ring restricting rotation, here's the single bond that connects the dienes. These are both locked in S-cis. These would be especially reactive in a Diels-Alder reaction.